Hello everyone, I'm so glad you've joined me today. I love sharing my ideas with you and I hope I inspire you with today's creation. I love just sharing ideas and, and having fun playing. This is the card we're going to be making today. I am continuing, this is the last day for my background ideas. And today I use the birch background for my daisies. And I also use the Forever Fern for my sentiment. So let's get started. First thing I did was I stamped the background the same way I stamped all the rest of them. And then I took my medium daisy punch and I punched out my flowers. All right, I gotta cut this to get to the inside. This was like a half a sheet of paper, so it works out perfectly. One more. There we go. Those are interesting to punch. All right, now when I did this, I looked at them. These have, and it's just the way the stamp works, these have a lot on it, so I knew I would make them the top. So I know the rest of these would be my bottoms. So I'm going to take, and to give my flower some movement, I'm going to curl the leaves down and all I'm doing is I'm holding it where the petal meets the center and I'm taking my bone folder and just kind of flicking down and it curls that paper down. So I'm going to do the same thing with this. You always want to add some movement to your flowers so that they look natural, although I don't know. Yeah, I think you could probably have one of this color. Now that I have my four down, my other two, my top pieces, I curl up. So you have um, the same kind of action, but you flipped it over and you're working from the back side so that the top is what you're curling. Just remember to hold those petals there or you'll rip them off. All right, now it's time for some glue dots. So with my glue dots, um, this one doesn't have a lot on it. This one does. So I'm going to make this one, this one the bottom, and this one will be the middle one. And I'm going to put these on here, and I am staggering them so that I have some spaces. Then I'm going to take the top one, and I'm going to put a glue dot on it, and I'm gonna put it on over top where those spaces are. And then you have a nice full flower. Hmm, I think I'm gonna make this one the bottom one. Both of these are about the same, but this one is a little bit more prominent. So I'm gonna make sure I have spacing. I'm gonna add my last one. All right, and I'm Pull it over a little there all right so there's our flowers to put my card together I knew I was going to use a vanilla background but I didn't want it plain so I pulled out the scripty background and some vanilla cardstock and I embossed it and this is four by five and a fourth all right and then I have my card base here, so I'm going, and this is your normal card base for in the U.S. It's five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a fourth. And then this is um, Bermuda Bay, not Bermuda Bay, Coastal Cabana, sorry. This is going to go on here, but it needs um, some double-sided tape because it's embossed. And... When you emboss, you have mountains and valleys. And in the back of it, this case, you have flats and valleys. So you want to make sure you have a lot of... Oh, I can get rid of that thing. Um, 
you have good uh, glue adhesive of some kind to hold it down. I find the tear and tape works well. I don't have to worry about it releasing on me. Um, glue sometimes doesn't, if there's not a lot of surface area, it doesn't, it doesn't catch really well. So I do use the tear, I say tear and tape, but it's double-sided tape. All right, and then you burnish your ends real good. And we're gonna take our pieces off. Whoops, before I go too far, I'm glad I looked at my card. I'm going to take these pieces off. All right. And I'm going to add my ribbon. Now, this ribbon is from, um, I'm not positive where which one it's from. Let me see in my catalog which ribbon it is. I don't know about you guys, but I use my catalog all the time. I sit down and look at it and, you know, when I'm looking for ideas. All right, hold on here. There it is. It's this one, which is Plain with Patterns Ribbon Combo. Okay? So this is the pool party one in there. So I'm going to cut a piece, a strip, that's a little longer, and I'm going to add this down the side. So, and I'm going to put another piece of double-sided tape over top because I don't want it to give way. And with this mesh type ribbon, it doesn't like to stick. So you really need to sandwich it between the ribbon. It releases really easy. So keep that in mind get some double-sided tape to use. Um, so let me... This, that stuff is really sticky. I've got one more bent down here. Man, it's so sticky it doesn't want to come off. All right, now this goes on my card base. So I'm going to open my card up so I can see where it is and stick it down. All right, so I've got that stuck down. Now it's time to add my flowers. I'm going to pull in my dimensionals and I'm going to put dimensionals on the back. And by cutting them in half, I can then, I know it's kind of crazy, but I match the centers so I have more surface area on the outside. Um, the other way, there's not a lot of surface area. All right, I'm going to take my backs off. I must have gotten a bad batch of dimensionals. Those backs don't want to cooperate. Oops, sorry. All right, and I'm just gonna put this one down here and this one like there. And I wanted something, not a rhinestone, so I thought, eh, the pearls would be good. So I'm gonna pull in a pearl, and this is the large one, and I'm gonna put it right in the middle. I want some, I, I want some interest on those, but I don't wanna take away from my background stamping. All right. Now I need my bow, so I'm going to tie my bow, and then I'm going to add it, and this ribbon is kind of temperamental to, to tie, so what I do is I pull it, and get it the size I want, and then I can cut it off. And now it's time to add it to my base. I'm going to look at both sides. Oh, I want this side up. All right, and I'm going to add a glue dot to the left of the knot and to the right of the knot. 
That way I'm kind of grabbing those ends so that they don't release. Sometimes if it gets caught on something, your bow can untie. It still needed something, so I pulled in my sentiment and I stamped it with Coastal Cabana. Let me pull this around so you can see, I hit it. All right, and I'm gonna stamp it like so. Then I pulled in my um, classic label punch and I put it in straight with the H close to the one end. All right. Then I took a scrap that I had left over from um, my, when I cut my cardstock down and I wanted to mimic that edge, so I pulled out my favorite punch. And this time, instead of feeding it through the inside, I'm gonna feed it from the outside, and I'm just gonna center it and punch it, and I get that arrow shape. Now you can also cut it, but I'm of the mind, I don't wanna cut it if I don't have to. So this is gonna go on there like so. I'm going to add it to my piece. All right, so I have it there, and I'm centering it as best I can. All right, now this is too long, so I'm going to kind of cut off that end. And now it's time to add it to my card base and I'm using dimensionals again I love my pop dots I use them a lot if you don't know that by now you'll get used to it because I do like them I will put one at each end and one in the middle all right I'm gonna take my backs off I'm gonna try that one didn't come off did that time, but it went flying. All right, and then that piece, my sentiment gets added up here and it's even with the vanilla. All right, and there it is. And then, remember, no naked envelopes. Don't forget to stamp your inside and your envelope with the stamp from the stamp set. I hope you've enjoyed my cards this week using backgrounds in unique and different ways. I would love for you to help me out on YouTube. Make sure you click the subscribe button below so you don't miss my videos. If you want to be notified when I upload a video, click the bell next to it. Thanks for visiting me today. Have a great day.